In 2018, the Air Force Network Integration Center celebrates 75 years of communications history. Military efforts at communications date back to 1863 with the Army Signal Corps. A young lieutenant by the name of William Billy Mitchell was a communications officer long before he became a pilot. Mitchell ventured to Alaska in 1900 to establish a telegraph system throughout the region. United States military involvement in communications began in the 1930s due to the lack of centralized direction over all airways communications. In 1934, Lieutenant Colonel Henry H. Hap Arnold led 10 Martin B-10 bombers round trip from Bowlingfield, Virginia to Fairbanks, Alaska. The lessons Arnold learned prompted Headquarters Army Air Corps to establish the Army Airways Communications System, or AACS, in November 1938. AACS provided centralized management of all Army Air Corps radio facilities used to control military traffic flying to and from Army posts in the continental United States. AACS established its first foreign station at Gander Lake, Newfoundland in March 1941 to provide airways communications and navigational aids for ferrying Lend-Lease aircraft to the United Kingdom. The control of airways communications was further centralized with the creation of the Army Airways Communications Systems Wing, activated on April 26, 1943. This date marks the official beginning of AFNIC. By the end of World War II, AACS was responsible for worldwide airways communications and air traffic control, with 49,000 military personnel operating 819 stations around the world. On September 11, 1946, the unit was redesignated the Airways and Air Communications Service, AACS. With the onset of the Cold War, AACS would be essential to the success of the Berlin Airlift and containment of the communist expansion in Europe. Air traffic control continued to be a significant mission for AACS, and by 1956, nearly half of its 29,000 personnel were dedicated to this mission. Throughout the 1950s, AACS provided airways communications for the Far East Air Forces, installed the first ground-controlled approach radar system in Korea, and implemented point-to-point -point and long-range communication called GLOBECOM. In 1961, AACS was redesignated as the Air Force Communications Service, AFCS, and became the Air Force's 16th major command. AFCS developed and managed the Air Force Data Communications System, Automatic Digital and Voice Networks, Autodin and Autovon, became heavily involved in the United States Space Program and established the first military affiliate radio system, MARS, in South Vietnam. The 1960s closed out with the command's continued engagement in the war in Southeast Asia. As the conflict in Vietnam wound down, AFCS was the first on the ground in North Vietnam in 1973 for Operation Homecoming, the repatriation of America's prisoners of war. Rounding out AFCS's growth throughout the 1970s, it saw the first operational use of the Air Force Satellite Communication System and the transfer of overall management of the Air Force Mars program to AFCS. On November 15, 1979, AFCS was redesignated as Air Force Communications Command, or AFCC. The early 1980s saw the merging of computers, communications devices, and office automation equipment, coining a new phrase, information systems. AFCC was responsible for communications and air traffic control operations at all Air Force installations and over the years operated 20 different models of aircraft in order to perform its worldwide mission to inspect airfield navigational aids. 
Leveraging multiple programs to include Hammer Ace, the command supported numerous no-fail communications missions like the Emerging Space Shuttle program, the government response to the Mount St. Helens eruption, and the Iranian hostage crisis. Significant advancements in communications continued throughout the 80s with fiber optic testing and Scott being the first Air Force base cut over to the Defense Commercial Telecommunications Network. AFCC would go on to support global contingencies like Operations El Dorado Canyon in Libya, Just Cause in Panama, and the first Gulf War in Southwest Asia. In 1991, AFCC went from a major command to a field operating agency of the United States Air Force. It was redesignated the Air Force Command, Control, Communications, and Computer Agency in 1993. Three years later, it was redesignated the Air Force Communications Agency, or AFCA. AFCA oversaw the development of the Stu-3 Secure Telephone, the Milstar Satellite Communications System, Red Switch Network Management, Video Teleconferencing, and the Defense Message System. The 1990s saw AFCA immersed in the wave of the future. Local area networks, the internet, the World Wide Web, and networks like Cipernet and Nippernet. AFCA was also heavily involved in the solution to the year 2000 date problem, also known as Y2K, which ensured the Air Force's smooth transition into the 21st century. Following the terrorist attacks on September 11, 2001, President Bush was limited in his ability to acquire critical, up-to-the-minute information while in flight, and AFCA answered the call, developing and managing the Executive Airlift Communications Network. During Operation Enduring Freedom, AFCA deployed its reduced footprint initial capability communication suite and personnel to support Air Force Special Operations Command in Afghanistan. AFCA then began a near seven-year effort known as the AFNET migration to improve warfighter access to data regardless of location and transform cyber operations consolidating network applications to build a true Air Force-wide total force enterprise. By 2009, AFCA was redesignated as the Air Force Network Integration Center, or AFNIC, and assigned to Air Force Space Command. Today's Air Force Network Integration Center continues its 75 years of dedicated service to the Air Force's cyberspace community. Efforts to migrate email to the commercial cloud have seen over 220,000 accounts transitioned with over half a million users planned by the end of the year. Today, AFNIC's wide-ranging programs include coalition multinational support for the F-35 Joint Strike Fighters mission planning and support software, as well as the Executive Airlift Communications Network, providing office-in-the-sky capabilities for Air Force One and the nation's top civilian and military leaders. AFNIC has undertaken an aggressive effort to restore domain controllers enterprise-wide, develop enterprise IT as a service, and upgrade Air Force technology and software to meet the challenges of a fast-changing world. The men and women of the Air Force Network Integration Center continue this proud legacy and will carry the banner of this storied organization for decades to come.